we're here with the directors of Showrunners, the documentary. I'm Des Doyle, director of Showrunners. Oh, I'm Ryan Patrick McGuffey, the uh, co-producer of Showrunners. I just want to say great film. Um, you guys are really tackling something that everybody's been wanting to know about for years. And I think right now is the perfect time to have this film out. Um, you guys are riding this wave where TV is eclipsing film um, and all this stuff. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, it, it took us four years to make it, but it seems to be working out to our advantage at the moment that like interest has kind of exponentially grown over that period of time. So, yeah, fingers crossed it's all going to work out when the film releases. Apparently Mark Duplass agrees with you because I was chatting to him earlier on about what was going on and he's having a very good run at the moment. So I'm taking that as a sign of, of uh, you know, good omen. Was there any hesitation on the part of any of the creators to be involved with the project? Um... There was, I mean, there were some people we approached who who didn't want to take part, um, uh, which is fair enough, you know. Um, there are some people, unfortunately, that we approached who did want to take part, and, and we just couldn't make the schedules work because it's very difficult with those guys to even get an hour of their day. Um, but once, once. I, th I think when people actually sat down with us and, and we got talking, we tried very hard to make them conversations and not interviews, you know, and, and try and get people relaxed and easy with us. And I think they got a sense very quickly that we were genuinely interested in them, that we were fans ourselves. And we were asking them the kinds of questions that they're not normally asked about. Like we weren't asking them what it's like to work with your lead actor or what it's like to, you know, it was, we were talking about them, the process. And yeah, I think a lot of them opened up. I mean, we had one or two examples where, um, we were doing an interview with uh, Robert and Michelle King, who created and run The Good Wife. We were given about 30 minutes for that because The Hollywood Reporter were coming in afterwards. But in the end, they made The Hollywood Reporter wait for us because they were having a nice time, kind of, which I think comes across in the film. You can kind of see them kind of even bantering a bit between themselves and stuff because they, they got relaxed and they were enjoying the chat with us. And I think that's why we succeeded in getting some really good stuff out of people. I'd say very few were reticent to be on camera it's more about like whether they felt comfortable enough to be maybe honest and or had the, most often more often than not it, they didn't have the time it was just a function of scheduling and uh, logistics and you know des uh, lives in dublin i'm in la most of the production of television series in america takes place in los angeles or new york so there are just certain you know elements of production that were you know logistical in nature that we just couldn't work around due to you know constraints of time and space we, we, we would have loved to have gotten Shonda, we really would, because she's the most successful female showrunner of all time. But, she, you know, it, we even had some of the writers and Greys trying to help us make that happen, but she seems a little publicity shy and stuff, so, which is fair enough, you know, but next, showrunners too, Shonda, please. <laughs> You showcase Ali Leroy, who show ran uh, Everybody Loves Chris, and you also have the, I forget her name, but Rosalian Isles, the showrunner, the, right, um, and they make kind of the statement that kind of turns the system upside down. Ali reflects on being a black showrunner, um, and she reflects on being a female showrunner, um, and I, I realize that you guys left that in, as opposed to the way that everybody else is speaking. Um, why did you feel those were aspects were important? That, that was really important for me because there there is an imbalance in, in the industry at the moment, you know. I, I think it's something that is very slowly changing, at, le at least in regard to, to women showrunners and stuff. Um, you know, um, Ali made some fantastic points with us and I thought it was really important to, to have those with us. And, you know, Ali's taking part actually in the panel that we're doing for the LA premiere with the TV Academy as well, as is Janet, because I think it's really important to try and represent those voices, you know. Um, I, I think it, it would have been wrong of us not not to have done that, you know, um, and and they speak very strongly about you know their feelings about it, and like I say, I I do, I do think it is something that is very slowly changing, you know. But it, it you know, the point that Ali makes is is very true. It's kind of like you really need to be one of the best that you can be in order to kind of earn that opportunity at the moment, you know. And he's he's been incredibly successful at what he does. So, yeah. Did anyone get in trouble for what they said? Have you heard any fallout? There are one or two things that, that we had to uh, remove just because there, was, there were some legal considerations in, in involved in them. But for the most part, everybody signed off on what they said and were happy enough to, to, to let it go, what they said. Um, th there, there are actually things that worked out slightly to some people's advantages in some way. Matt Carnahan, who's in the film, who talks about um, an unhappy experience he had with, with a particular show. Um, 
there was a little piece of that we used in one of the trailers and as a result of that the head of the network actually called them up uh, and it was the first time they'd spoken in a little while so they, they actually kind of kissed and made up a little bit as a result of that so we're actually we're you know we're, pe we're peacemakers yeah, yeah you know uh, more than we're trying to be troublemakers yeah, the of the entertainment industry uh, we're just gonna go in and sort it all out yeah is there something that uh, you weren't able to put in um, that you feel like uh, should be in or anything like that? I mean, it's very difficult. We had 100 hours of footage, like... Shot to over four years at multiple conventions, though it is, yeah. Yeah, to, to, to work that down to 90 minutes is very difficult. So, yeah, you, you, you do end up, like... They call it killing your babies in the editing process. And, like, you, you, get, you get so attached to certain people and sequences and stuff, and letting them go is very, very difficult. Um, but, you know, that, that's what DVDs are for. We will try and make sure that everybody gets to see as much of, of what we've done as possible because everybody was so good. I mean, that, that was one of the biggest problems for us, that all of the contributors were so good that it becomes very difficult to try and choose, you know, which way to go. Um, but that's a great problem to have. Well, you know? like any, any documentary comes together in the edit process and you kind of figure out, you know, like Damon says, like the good comes out in the wash and the bad comes out in the wash and you kind of, it all works as a cohesive whole. And now that like Des has cut together like the best bits of the entire film, um, it, it kind of it goes without saying that like he, he obviously made the right choices that needed to make despite some of the restrictions that we might have been working around like it, it's an incredible film and uh, I, I mean I only saw it for the first time recently in, in the summer um, myself you know because the edit took place in Dublin and like it's remarkable what he's able to accomplish um, I couldn't be prouder I yeah. had to pay him 20 bucks to say that <laughs> yeah. um, anything uh, maybe your next project anything you're working on now um, we're uh, very early development on, on, on another doc at the moment. Um, I ho hoping to shoot a little bit of footage with somebody in LA in about two weeks' time, but it, but it's very early days on that at the moment. I, it, there's just so much promotion and work over the next couple of weeks to try and get showrunners out there. October 31st in theaters and on VOD. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're like that's taking up a lot of our time at the moment. I am producing a short very soon uh, and with an um, incredible cast, one of whom is an Academy Award nominee um, that I'm working with and uh, I can't say who it is yet because it's part of a, a whole campaign we're ramping up but it's going to be awesome. So showrunnersthemovie.com, on Twitter we're at showrunnersfilm, facebook.com slash showrunners and Instagram showrunnersfilm as well and Tumblr showrunnersfilm. Um, I'm at DC Ireland on Twitter. Uh, Ryan P. McGuffey, that's just my first name, middle initial, last name, M C G U F F E Y. Great stuff, thank you very much. Great, thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs>